This movie will show how easy it is to create some really interesting 3D textured letters using Enroute's Rapid Texture tool. The first thing I'm going to do is start a new file and define my plate. I have a plate with a width of 45 inches, a height of 8 inches, and a thickness of 0.75 inches. And I'll hit OK. The plate appears on screen represented by a red rectangle. If I double click the word top, I can view the plate from any number of different views. Double clicking again will highlight a specific view. Now I'm going to create some text by going to the text tool. I select the style of text, the nominal height, click on screen, and then enter the text I would like to add. In this case, I'm going to choose a material size that's a slightly larger than my part I want to cut. I'm going to center this text by hitting Control and 5 to center it in the middle of the plate. If my text was larger or smaller, I would adjust my, my material size accordingly. Now I'm going to create a couple of layers using the Create Layer tool. And I'm going to call one of my layers Texture. and one text. I'm going to select my text, go to the change layer tool, and put it in the text layer. Now I'm going to create my texture, and I'll start off by drawing a line. I go to the line tool, click once on screen, hold down my shift key to keep it in the straight in the X plane, and click again to create my second point. Now I'll right click twice to get out of the tool. In this way I've created a straight line across the material. I'll hit control and the 5 from the number pad to the right of the keyboard to center this line into part. Next I'm going to choose the rapid texture tool and here I'm going to define a few things about my texture. The size of the part, which is going to be 45 inches by 8 inches. A wavelength, which is going to determine how the frequency of the pattern as it's repeated across the material. A horizontal amplitude. This will determine how much I can deviate back and forth from the center line in the XY axis. And the vertical amplitude, which determines how much in the Z axis my line can deviate. The offset determines the general offset distance between each of the lines as the, the lines are created that will create our texture. We're going to do one row and one column. And noise and random will help give us a nice varied pattern. We'll hit the preview button and then apply. Once the apply button is, is clicked, the newly offset lines are created. And this, these lines will be used to create our random texture. I'm going to go to the front view and click my down arrow once to put a little bit of separation between the contours that are created and the top of the material. Now I'm going to create my toolpath by selecting them. They're already grouped and you can see the lines are going back and forth to help optimize cut time. I'm going to go to the engraved toolpath. If I haven't already saved a strategy with this information in it, I need to come here and choose a ball nose tool or whatever profile tool I want to use. In this example, we're going to use a one inch ball nose tool. I'll specify a, a depth, but because I'm going to choose the follow contour parameter, this depth will be ignored and the toolpath will follow the line that was generated. I'll go to the edit tab to enter information such as feed rate. The feed rate will be determined by the tool you're using, the type of machine you have, and the material that you're cutting. If you're not sure what feed rates you use, contact the person who sold you the machine or your tooling manufacturer. Now I'm going to hit the OK button and the toolpath is going to be created. This toolpath will create our texture. Now I'll switch to the text layer and we're going to do two things to the text. One thing is we're going to put a little chamfer around it and this text will also be used to cut out the shapes. 
I'm going to go to the text tool and convert it to curves. Now it is lines and arcs and no longer a, a standard Windows font. It is, it is actually a font, but it is text. Uh, it is no longer text, so now it's contours that looks like text. Now I'll go to the engrave toolpath and clear what's already there. I'm going to choose a connect tool to put a little chamfer around the outside of the part. I'll double click the 90 degree conic and enter a depth of 0.25. If I hit OK here, I can go to the side and get a feel for how deep this is cutting. And if I turn on both layers, I can take a look at where exactly my other texture will be created. If I create this engrave at the top of the plate, some of the texture will remove it. So I'm going to move the, the engraved toolpath down a little bit farther into the material. To do that, I'm going to select the text and remove the current toolpath. Reapply an engraved toolpath. I'll go to the Edit tab and enter a value of 0.25 for the surface value. This will move the final toolpath 0.25 below the surface making sure I cut into the part without having the texture remove it. Again, we would put in feed rate information. Once this information has been applied, it can be easily resaved and recalled without having to enter this information time after time. We're going to uncheck Follow Contour because we want this tool to actually go deep into the material. Now I have my texture and my engrave. The final step is to apply a cutout toolpath to this. With my text still selected, I can go to the routing offset. And here I'm going to choose a pre existing strategy. I'll go to a depth of 0.76 to cut all the way through the material. And as part of my save strategy, I'm going to add a final pass. This is going to allow me to keep the part in place without having it move around the table because a small thin skin will be left for the last pass which will clear the part from the material. A little message box tells me that the cut depth is deeper than the current plate thickness. This tells me I'll be cutting the part all the way away from the material. Now you can see we've got two different types of tool paths applied to the 2D text. One is the chamfer and the other will be the cutout. The last step will be to simulate our part. We'll turn on all the layers and go to the simulation. I'm going to keep my resolution about 123 dpi which will give me a good preview of the part and I have a couple different material colors selected. I can reposition my part by using the shift and the right click key. Now I'm going to set the order and I'm going to order it by tool and I'm going to have it do the texture first, then the engrave, and then the cutout. Now we'll go to the first tool change. Once the toolpath has completed simulating texture, we can hit the next tool, which will be the 90 degree conic tool. This tool will engrave a little bit of a bevel around the text. And then the last step will be to cut out the parts. Because a larger profile tool is used, the amount of time required to create this texture is far less than other methods of creating a textured part. Once we're done, we can zoom in to see the kind of effect that we'll have. This is the conclusion of how easy it is to create a nice textured letter within route software.